Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another 8th Naval Squadron career of Derek Stone. And uh, we are flying the Sopwith triplane. Let's go ahead and load up the career. There's the Naval Air Squadron. If you want to read that, you can pause that and read that. Uh, that's the history of the number 208 squadron, originally designed, uh, designated as that, and they switched to the number 8 naval squadron. All right, so we're going to play a couple missions today, uh, and we're just going to breeze through uh, the flight to objective um, and edit all that out. All right, so we've got a couple of missions today, it looks like. We've got um, offensive patrol. Uh, it's completed, and then we got another offensive patrol. Let's go ahead and begin that. Now I am in the uh, dual machine gun sock with triplane. Our objective is to pursue and destroy hostile aircraft that I see along the patrol route. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just take off. We're just gonna um, head head to the objective. Uh, Any time that I like accelerate time in the game, I just edited 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 that out. I thought that was unnecessary for you to see. All right, so we are over the trenches right now. Um, don't really know what I'm pursuing. Uh, we're supposed to be pursuing planes. There is a dogfight. Okay, so we are going to maneuver over there and we are going to engage whatever we're engaging. green flare. I don't know what that's supposed to symbolize. Maybe that's something from the Germans. I don't know. Okay, I've got my head locked on to an enemy right there. I'm using head tracking. Helps with my spatial awareness. It lets me know where the enemy is. And I'm closing on him. Now it looks like he's trying to break away from the pack. I don't really know why he's breaking away from the pack, but I figured at the time I was thinking, you know, okay, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one with me and this guy, because uh, if he winds up being a better pilot, then we're going to, and then I see the DFW, so I'm like, okay, that's a two-seater, so I'm thinking, I've got this guy, I'm going to own him, let's see what we can do about it. Waiting to get within range, a good range, clear, clearly within my sights. I think I've got some hits on him. Chewing him up. But, and his tail gunner's not really firing at me, that's why I don't get it. Something fell off of it, it looks like an uh, aileron. Continue to shoot. Oh no, look at those wings. I would hate to be that guy. Follow him in. His wings are still floating in the air. They don't, they're not going to fall as fast. So now I'm thinking, okay, I need to re, uh, reorient myself, find out where my friends are. I think that's them at 11 o'clock. Go ahead and link up with those guys. We are behind enemy lines. And on the map, you can kind of see where the no man's land is. And on the screen, you can see the brown area of destruction. That is no man's land. That's the area between the trenches. Okay, we link up, and nothing else happens. So we're on the way back to our uh, airfield. There's a couple of things I wanted to point out or show, or some things that I noticed about flying back, uh, while flying back. Uh, there's a lot of these fields all over the place. There's like fields, plow fields, and everything else. But when you look around, I follow these roads, and I kind of glance around. I don't see any farmhouses. I mean, I look in the woods. I don't see any houses. You know, I look at these areas of the roads that look like the places where farmhouses would be. They're not modeled. Trees, hills, roads, fields, all modeled. The only houses that you find, or buildings, 
are the ones that are in towns, like the one I had, and your aerodromes. I haven't found any, like, lone farmhouses out anywhere. I haven't really been looking. This is, like, the first time I kind of glanced around. Uh, but I don't ever see any farmhouses. Okay, there's our flare letting us know we are clear to land. We're not going to show all that. All right, so we're back. Now, I just kind of wanted to go over our mission results screen. There's a lot of screens I haven't showed you yet, but there's the daily reports. Derek Jones got one kill right there. Nobody else got any kills today. What was my kill? It was Peter Dietrich in a DFW CV. And his uh, fin number was FAA225. And he was a field available to rank. Part of Germany, of course. I didn't show, hopefully I didn't shoot anybody from England or France down, right? Okay, next mission. Okay, missions for the day. We got uh, offensive patrol. I'm not participating in. All those are completed. The last thing is I have a second mission. I have to do a protection patrol. I'm assigned to a second mission. So it's Rice Williamson. All right, you can see the two-seaters flying above us. Those are the FE. Two Bs. Escort friendly two seaters. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, take off. Come on, contact. Contact. Okay, the green flare says we are free to take off. Looking over there at that little car over there, that's our squadron leader checking us out as we take off. He's always checking us out, just making sure the mission goes off okay. All right, so now we're in the air and we are flying home actually because uh, it's like we got to the, we're, we're basically, remember, we're escorting our uh, two-seater. But I wanted to show you this right here. My flight leader has a busted wing. I think he was hit by flak earlier in the mission. And instead of just saying, hey, I'm going home, I'm going to fly back, I'm going to nurse this thing in. Uh, Walter, man, Walter Reynolds, man, he said, screw it, I'm going to, we're going to stick with our mission, I'm going to fly around and escort these uh, FE-2Bs that you can see below. And we are going to, I'm going to stick with them. I'm not going to abandon them. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, man, if it was me, I, I, I'm going to be honest, man. If it was me and my wings half broke like that, I'm flying back to base. <laughs> I'm not, I would, maybe I would say, okay, you three guys, you know, the rest of the flight, stay with these guys. I'm broke up. I need to go back to base. But he didn't do it. And look at it. There he is. We're on our way in for a landing. And uh, I just wanted to show you he was still with us. <laughs> and we're going in. And I'm surprised he nursed that thing back with a broken wing like that. I mean, look at that. <laughs> Man, I was like, whoa, dude. Okay, so... It uh, looks like it took a lot of effort to watch him fly in. Okay, I did a, little, did a couple of little uh, flybys, you know. And look at this guy, Frederick Williamson. Look at his lower wing. It's broke, too. These guys must have been hit by flak. I got lucky. I didn't get any damage like that. And then I was just looking around at all the different ground targets that are around, trying to experiment with my key bindings, figuring out what the hell, how do I go to friendly planes? I haven't figured it out. I think I've deactivated that friendly binding anyway. But like, there I am. That's me. Yay. That's my flyby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I must have hit it like three times. Four times. Five, six times. <laughs> Seven times. Eight times. Nine times. You know, they're like, what the hell? What buttons am I supposed to be pressing? Sorry about that. 
And the red ones obviously are Germans, and those are the American, or not Americans, but Allies, probably British in this section of, of the war. There might be some French laying around somewhere. Um, there's a train driving by. These are all targets that you can shoot at, and there he goes. That's a broken upper wing. Okay, so we got a guy with a broken upper wing, a guy with a broken lower wing. Wow. And then two of us that. So if we, and we didn't, we did not get into a dogfight. If we had gotten into any kind of high G terms or anything, I would have been afraid that those guys would have broke their wings off. And that would have been one reason why I would have requested, if I was a leader, I would have told them to go home. Now, I'm, uh, sta I'm actually going to show you their landing because one of them is pretty epic. Okay, I'm trying to locate him. Like what the? Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> there he is. I don't have a little icon on him or anything like that, but that's that's the flight leader coming in with his upper wing all broke, and he's landing. We land one at a time, so. Okay, he's almost on the ground. All right, here he goes. And... Boop! <laughs> he flips over. <laughs> he hits the ground and flips it over. All right, so let's go in to uh, my landing. This is my time. Now I wanted to show you, uh, you hear you hear me like throttling up, throttling down, throttling up, throttling down. Because whenever I watch like a World War I movie or something like that, and I hear a plane go I always, what, what I previously had thought was the pilot was wounded and he was just trying to nurse it in, you know, or trying to figure out where the engine was damaged and it was barely working or something like that. I didn't realize the pilot was doing that on purpose. <laughs> he was trying to, you know, throttle it up, throttle it down, throttle it up, throttle it down, trying to keep his airspeed where it needs to be. Like right now, he just dropped the throttle to zero. We're going to coast in. Um, yeah heading into the wind. You get the best lift with the wind blowing in your face like that. So he's trying to keep it about 95 miles an hour or kilometers per hour, I've noticed. And I don't know why they always land over these buildings. I would, I, if it was me, I'd land a little bit to the left. I wouldn't ever fly over the hangar building. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm good. I'm out. All right, well, thanks for coming out and checking out this episode. Uh, it was pretty non eventful, really. All right, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.